Hi, everyone, welcome to my channel again. Today, I am going to share my fifth video of regression analysis, which is the coefficient of determination or R squared. Before watching, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Your support will encourage me to produce more videos related to statistic, mean six sigma and operation management. We developed the estimated regression equation to approximate the linear relationship between the x and y. A question now is, how well does the estimated regression equation fit the data? In this section, we show that the R-squared provides a measure of the goodness of fit for the estimated regression equation. What is R-squared? R-squared is also known as coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination, R square measures the proportion of variability in Y, which can be explained by Y's relationship with X in the derived model. R squared is the regression sum of squares divided by the total sum of squares, or 1 minus error sum of squares divided by total sum of squares. The total variation in our response values can be broken down into two components, the variation explained by our model and the unexplained variation or noise. The total sum of squares, or SST, is a measure of the variation of each response value around the mean of the response. For each observation, this is the difference between the response value and the overall mean response. The regression sum of squares, or SSR, is a measure of the variation explained by our model. For each observation, this is the difference between the predicted value and the overall mean response. The error sum of squares, or SSE, is a measure of the random error, or the unexplained variation. For each observation, this is the difference between the response value and the predicted value. Simple regression examines the relationship between a continuous response variable y and an explanatory variable x. Given a sample of n bivariate data, we want to estimate the true relationship between y and x in the population. Graphically, we would like to draw a straight line so that it seems to fit the data as well as possible. There is one line in particular that is very interesting, and it is called the best fit line. This is the line that best fits the given set of data. For any specific observation, the actual value of y can deviate from the predicted value. The deviations between the actual and predicted values are called errors, or residuals. Since a residual may be viewed as the deviation between the data and the fit, it is also a measure of the variability in the response variable not explained by the regression model. Let draw a line of y bar to explain the error sum of squares, regression sum of squares and total sum of squares. The error sum of squares or SSE is the difference between the response value and the predicted value. The regression sum of squares, or SSR, is the difference between the predicted value and the overall mean response. The total sum of squares, or SST, is a measure of the variation of each response value around the mean of the response. For each observation, this is the difference between the response value and the overall mean response. The total variation consists of two components which are, regression sum of squares and error sum of squares. Mathematically, SST equals SSR plus SSE. Let's take an example. Data from a sample of 13 are used to examine the relation between X and Y. The sample data are shown in table below. First, estimating the slope beta sub 1, and the result is 0.0751. On the other hand, the interceptor beta sub 0 is minus 21.61. The total sum of squares, denoted SST, is the squared difference between the observed dependent variable and its mean. The value is 403.077. Next is the regression sum of squares. It is the sum of the 
differences between the predicted value and the mean of the dependent variable. Multiply the slope with S sub xy. S sub xy is the sum of the product of the difference between x and its means and the difference between y and its mean. The value is 379.313. Last but not least is error sum of squares. SSE is the sum of the difference between the observed value and the predicted value. SSE is the total sum of squares minus the regression sum of squares. The value is 23.763. The R squared is 0.941, which is obtained by dividing SSR with SST. We can convert the R squared value into percentage by multiplying it with 100%. From the scatter plot, it shows a positive linear relationship between X and Y. The scatter diagram enables us to observe the data graphically, and to draw preliminary conclusions about the possible relationship between the variables. The best fit line is Y equal to minus 21.61 plus 0.07510X. The best fit line is a line that actually minimizes the sum of the squares of the deviations between the observed values of the dependent variable, and the predicted values of the dependent variable, with respect to slope and intercept. The slope is 0.0751, we can conclude that the estimated average increase in y for each additional of x is 0.0751. To confirm that the regression analysis is valid, verify assumptions about the model error term. Three major assumptions which are normally distributed, constant variance for all fitted values, random and independent over time. Let's start with the first assumption of normally distributed. A method of checking the normality assumption is to construct a normal probability plot of the residuals. The points in this plot should generally form a straight line if the residuals are normally distributed. If the points on the plot depart from a straight line, the normality assumption may be invalid. The second assumption is constant variance for all fitted values. A method of checking the constant variance is to construct a residuals versus fitted values plot of the residuals. This plot should show a random pattern of residuals on both sides of zero. If a point lies far from the majority of points, it may be an outlier. There should not be any recognizable patterns in the residual plot. For instance, if the spread of residual values tend to increase as the fitted values increase, then this may violate the constant variance assumption. Third assumption is random and independent. A method of checking the random and independent or to construct a residuals versus order plot. This is a plot of all residuals in the order that the data was collected and can be used to find non-random error, especially of time-related effects. This plot helps you to check the assumption that the residuals are uncorrelated with each other. In this example, the residual or error fulfill the three assumptions of normally distributed, constant variance for all fitted values and random and independent over time. Watch my another video to understand more about residual analysis. Characteristics of R-squared. The R-squared should be used with caution, since it is always possible to make R-squared large by adding enough terms to the model. R-squared always increases when you add additional predictors to a model. For example, the three predictor model will always have an R squared that is at least as high as the two predictor model. The expected value of R squared will increase as the spread of the X increases. Thus, a large value of R squared may result simply because X has been buried over an unrealistically large range. On the other hand, R squared may be small because the range of X was too small to allow its relationship with Y to be detected. Even though a strong empirical relationship may exist between two or more variables, this cannot be considered evidence that the regressor variables and the response are related in a cause, 
and effect manner. There will be a series of videos for regression analysis. Remember to subscribe to my channel so that you will not miss out my next videos. Bye, see you next time.